It's almost 2020. Well, in fact, for some of you around the world, it's already 2020. But at the time of this recording here in the Pacific Northwest, I'm about 10 and a half hours from the new year. Of course, I won't see it rung in because I'll be long asleep, but I'll be up bright and early in the morning. In fact, dark and early. My wife and I will head out on our morning walk and we will embrace the new year. Not only is it going to be 2020, but it's a new decade. And as someone who came into this world at the beginning of a decade, I see that first digit in my age go up every time there's a new decade. But it doesn't bother me. I'm excited about it. I'm looking forward to it. Well, this has been an amazing year. It seems like just yesterday I was making the first couple of videos of 2019. And here I am making the last. This year has been a lot of fun. My interactions with you all have been amazing. In fact, with my subscribers, we went over 100,000 this year. I pre appreciate that so much. I thank you so much and all the positive feedback. And I hope as I move into 2020 that my videos will get better, that my content will be even clearer. I've been really focusing recently uh, on becoming more efficient, more lean. In fact, I'm calling it editing. I'm editing everything, editing down the things that I don't need that are in my way. The less is more concept. And I hope that in um, the procedures I use in woodworking and the tools that I use that we can do more and more with less and less. It isn't buying those fancy new tools or truck or trailer or whatever. It's, it's the end result. It's the work that you can do with them. And, and I just hope that uh, I can convey some of those ideas and I continue to learn and I just want to keep sharing those with you as we move forward. So again, thank you very much for all your support. Uh, have a wonderful and safe new year. And we will see you on the other side, 2020. Happy New Year. Oh, you're still here. Hey, for those that hung around, here's a little bonus. I've been editing literally not only my physical stuff and my tools and getting more lean and more efficient in the shop, but I've been doing it to my photo library as well. And as I've been doing that, I came across some photos of a workbench that I forgot about. This is actually the prototype, the very beginning of the Polk workbench. It is a thinner foldable version. And so I found these pictures and I thought for those that stuck around and watched the very end of the video, I'd share those with you. So here's kind of the finished product. It's, it's you can see it's thinner, and um, but it still holds up the table saw and it sits on a couple of saw horses. And if I show you where it started, okay, so here I am using my track and my workbench prior to that, which is just for decades had been just a hollow core door. I'd pick them up and use them until I cut them up, and that was my bench. And so I'm cutting down the pieces here with the track saw. You can see I've, I've got the cut here. I'm using the Craig jig. And then I start to put it together. And this is also the first time I came up with the idea of the pipes to hold up the table saw. These are heavy duty uh, before I had it. They were way too heavy to be in a portable workbench, but it was before I um, had the time to test out the lighter gauge stuff that I eventually went to. And then uh, drilling the holes for the first time, just laying them out with the level, nothing fancy, no, no jigs to help me out like the PARF guide that is the only way I'd build them now. And then putting it together with uh, pocket screws. And it's all 18 millimeter. I had not experienced, uh, experimented with 12 millimeter yet, which is the only way I'd build my bench now. And then laying out the holes uh, three quarter inch on four inch centers before I went to 20 millimeter on 96 millimeter centers. And there uh, is the bench folded out and the holes drilled in it already. And there it's flipped upside down. So you can see it had this piano hinge. And so you would fold it and be able to, as a 4x8 uh, when unfolded, 2x8 when folded. And you could uh, slip, you know, I'd take it to the job. Of course, I was testing it out. I found it to be too clunky and too heavy. I was very excited about it. Uh, but I kept 
uh, working on. In fact, you can see that I added these cutouts because I was trying to cut down on the weight. I didn't have it originally, so I went in and cut those uh, after the fact to, um, you know, to try to lighten the thing. Um, it also did not have the lower shelf. I really came to uh, decide that having a place to store the tools was so critical. And there is another little look from the side. So you can see it's kind of starting to take the look. But again, this predates my miter stand and the, and the Polk Workbench, and which ultimately led to the Polk Workbench 2, an even more refined version. And then the uh, um, Polk Miter Stand combining with the Workbench led to the uh, Polk Toll Station. So pretty excited with uh, how things have gone. It, it has been a lot of fun to find these these uh, photos and kind of remember how it all started and then this was the first uh, go around with hanging the table saw uh, using the heavier pipes and just coming up with a way to sort of uh, have it with that little v-cut and center on the pipes well for those of you who stuck around i hope you enjoyed those photos not only did i find those but i found thousands of photos of projects that i've done and what i'm wondering is would you find it interesting if i went back and just sort of did storytelling, just kind of talking ahead and showed you the photos. Here was a, a job that I forgot uh, that we had even done. And it was a, a stair rail, a beautiful home on the water. And they were, it was all finished, had the carpet in, the stair treads in, all of that kind of stuff. But they had built this two by four rail. They uh, did not have uh, somebody who could build them a rail. So they contacted us and uh, I went in, designed the rail, and then my crew and I went in and we built it. And you can see my tools here. This predates the Polk Workbench and the miter stand. And you can see I'm using just commercial stuff. But I'm not gonna go through this whole one, but you can see if I jump to the end of this one, this would be for another story time. The, uh, this is what the rail ended up uh, looking like so quite an improvement so I've got projects like that and if you would like to see that in 2020 and coming up to go through some of my past projects and just talk you through them and I would do this as one of them uh, got whole houses I built remodels decks all kinds of things so let me know in the comments down below thank you for spending this time with me in the smart wood shop I want to wish you all a happy healthy and prosperous 2020